In this session, we want to make a quick quiz. So first of all, we're going to start with a file and start with a new HTML document. So we're going to use the current version of HTML5 and we're going to call it, give it a title and we'll call it quiz www.lmarsden.com. So we're going to click on create. Now the first thing we need to do is give it a title. So we could go question number one. So if there was multiple type questions, you could do this for multiple um, like quizzes, etc. So we're just going to be dealing with one question at the moment. Um, what is the basic language for websites? Okay. Now what we want to do is put some um, options up for them to select and I'm going to use a table to hold that. So I'm going to put insert and table and I'm going to have two by two and 400 pixels wide. We click on OK. At the moment I've got 4,000, sorry. So I'm just going to quickly edit that and now it's back to 200. Now inside here I want to be able to put some radio buttons so they can make some selections. So I'm going to go in and under form and go radio buttons. Now in the radio buttons you've got an ID. This is how we can reference each individual radio button. I'm just going to put ANS1 and now I'm going to copy that and paste that in each of the cells. And as I go through you notice that ANS1 has been updated to 2, to 3, to 4. So each of those are in there. So now I can actually come back and give it some information. So I could actually put um, JavaScript. I could actually have um, say my SQL um, let's put HTML in here um, and then we could have um, something like PHP here or something like that so there is our options that they can select now what I want to check is that all the radio buttons work correctly because they all have the same name so name is radio 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 they're all a group so if I wanted to I could have that as question 1 Q1 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 and they all relate to Q1 so before we can run this, I need to save it. So I go save, and I'll put um, question one here, and it will save it into my directory in my site, and just go preview um, in Safari at the moment. I normally use Google. And as you notice, the buttons are clicking around and working exactly how they should be. So the next thing I need to do is add a button. So I'm gonna insert, and we're gonna go back down to forms, and I'm gonna insert a button now the button I need to give a, a name to, oh, so it's ID, so in this case here we're just going to call it um, BTN um, submit and on its face value we're going to give it a value submit. So now our button will look at us. So the next thing we need to do is um, create a JavaScript area. So we're just going to head down and inside or inside our body tag but after a paragraph tag here I'm just going to create um, a script and then we need to give it its type and it's going to be equal to um, text forward slash java javascript and then we're going to close the script tag now inside the script tag we need to first of all before we do that actually create a function so we need a function and the function is going to be called f question one bracket bracket and then we're going to open and close that function bracket as well so we've got a function in here now what we need to do is have the button do something so when we select the button we can give it a state like on click and then we can get it to do something so what do we want it to do is f question um, one bracket yeah. bracket and then we need to see that the function call is working so we're just going to put an alert in here and we're just going to say in question one and we're going to save that and just check that our button call is working. So when I click on submit in question one, so we know it's working correctly. Now that's working correctly, we need to then declare a variable. So we're going to R, var, and we're going to have in here 
correct answer. So we're going to have S for string. And that correct answer is going to be equal to, and we can actually get the information from the button. So we need to get, um, it's equal to the document dot get element by ID. So you can select it out and then we can use its name. Now we know the answer is HTML. So, and that's in the third one here. So if we look at um, the answers as we go through, HTML is in the third one, the ID is ANS3. So get um, the answer by ANS3. So we want the item there. And we can then store that into the S correct answer. And you want to place ANS3 in quotes, so it's not looking for a variable. And then once we've got that, we need to check that we've actually got the contents of S correct answer is actually the data from ANS3. So what we're going to do is alert, and we're going to alert out the answer 3. We're just going to save that now and quickly run it. So we're selecting the answer, clicking submit. We're in question one, yes, and we've got object element information. So that's good. So we are storing that information. So it won't matter at the moment. We do know that that information is going in. So now what we need to do is to check to see what has actually been entered. I'm just going to rem this out and comment this out so it doesn't run anymore. And also I'm going to comment out this alert tag here because we know they're working okay. If we're developing, we can always come back and reaction them. So now what we want to do is use an if statement and look at the answer itself and seeing if it's checked. So we're actually using the method of the of the variable and seeing that is ANS3 checked. And we're using an absolute there to say true. I'm just going to make this a little bit wider so we can see a bit more code. So true. So if that's true, then what we want to do is alert and say correct answer and close that if statement off. So now we're going to save it and quickly run it. And we're going to select the correct answer, click on true, and it comes up with correct answer. Now, if it's not correct, we can actually put in then an else statement can go else, if it's not correct, we could actually alert then wrong answer. So we're just gonna copy this down here. Rather than correct, we're gonna put wrong, wrong answer. And we're gonna save that once we close the bracket off again. So you gotta make sure all your brackets line up. We're going to save that and run this. So this time we're going to get the correct answer, correct answer, and then we're going to pick, say, MySQL, and it says wrong answer. So now that's working. If you wanted to, you could actually leave the submit button to last, and you could actually put out all your questions, like questions one, two, three, four, five, etc., making sure that question one is question one, question two would have question two as its name, so the radio buttons are all independent. And then you could actually have a variable assigned to each one of the correct answers, the same way we've done it here, var one, var two, etc. So you could actually have all the correct answers and then you could work them out. If you wanted to, you could actually put in a scoring system where you could actually go into the var section here and we'll put one above and we'll go var um, and score and we will assign it to zero to start with. This is how you normally do a constant, but we'll do it this way. So n scores equal to zero. And then what we can actually do is say, well, if you get it correct, we could actually say in here, n score plus equals one. And if you get it wrong, we could actually decrease it. So we could actually come down here and go and score minus equals one. And then at the end of this, we could actually document.write or we could display it in a number of ways. So we might go document.write 
or you can have a text box on there and update that. So we could actually do that right now. So let's do that instead. So just before or next to the submit button, let's put a score button in there. So we're gonna go insert form and we're gonna put in there a text box. And in this text field here, we're gonna have score. And what we might do is actually, we might, yeah, we'll move it down. And on its ID, once again, we need to be able to reference this. So we have an ID of txt score, and then we can actually update this. We can actually say that um, document dot get element by ID, which ID? We want txt score dot value equals n score, and we should be able to now save that and run this. So we select the correct one, submit, correct answer. We got a score of one. So let's submit it again. We get a score, and we keep getting a score of one because at the moment we're declaring the variable inside the function. So every time we run the function, it's gonna set it to one. So we're just gonna take that outside the function and paste it here. That way it's gonna start at zero and every time we increment, then it will go up or down. So let's save that and run this now. So if we get it correct, we should get a score of one. And then we'll submit it again, we should get a score of two. And if we get it wrong, we can actually get a, a de-incrementing one as well. So that's how we can actually increment and de-increment scores as well. So this is an easy way of creating a simple quiz.